and welcome. Today I'm going to take a look at these Crayola Signature Brush and Detail Dual Tip Markers. I have a soft spot for Crayola. They are a company that I grew up with. I had Crayola crayons and so when I saw these I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and check these out. I don't use a lot of brush tip markers. I'm not what you would consider an artist per se. I do like to color and I do like to stamp so these I thought would be fun. I know that brush tip markers are or brush tip um, types of, of markers are very popular. They're not ones that I have worked a lot with so this will be interesting to see. This is a set of 32. I think the price point is pretty good um, and also I I feel like <laughs> Honestly, from a marketing perspective, if you put something in a tin, I'm pretty interested in it. I love things that are in tins and that have an opportunity for me to, you know, keep them in sort of a, I don't know what you call it, a, an organized way. But it looks like there's a nice variety of colors. There are two tips to each one. It looks like there is a, a fine tip and a brush tip a brush tip to each of these and I've not opened these yet so it'll be interesting to see how they go mm. right away I can tell I like the packaging I like the fact that they're sort of separated makes them easy to get in and out there's a couple of layers here pretty nice I like the way that they're sort of laid out this will be a great way for me to be able to keep them straight looks like there's quite a few colors here that are pretty nice. I'm liking the greens. So we'll see how these work. What I'm going to do is I have already gone in and stamped an image. Um, this is hard press. This is hard press watercolor paper that I have stamped an image and you probably can't see it but I have stamped um, the image and then I have clear, I've stamped the image in black and then I have clear embossed over the top so that the embossing is a little bit, um, will give me a little bit of the coloring inside the lines. Having that little layer of embossing is very helpful. This is one of my favorite stamps. This is the uh, Lawn Fawn fairy friends I think and I'll have a description in the 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 area below to kind of give you uh, an idea of what stamps that I used but let's go ahead and jump in let me take a look at this looks like this is the fine tip and this is the brush tip and I'm gonna go ahead and start using the brush tip they're not as fluid as I have used with other brush tips. These are kind of got a hard brush tip to them. They're a little bit, they're less of a, sometimes the ones, the brush tips that I've seen are actual brushes, whereas this is, this is a little harder. It's a, it's got a little bit of a weight to it. I am going to use some water, a water pen to sort of blend to see how that does and it's, it's actually blending very well. I'm liking the look at that. This has got a kind of a teal to it. but it is more of a controlled because it's not really the very tip is a brush but the rest of it is really not it's more of a harder marker and you know honestly for someone like me who is not an expert when it comes to coloring I like that it is a little bit easier for me to manage I'm going in to blend that out a little we won't put too much color in this top because it's a smaller area. And again, this is hard. Uh, this is what they call hard watercolor paper. And I like it because it has a little bit of an easier time to blend. So let's see. Let's find a different color. We'll do more of a, of a brown. And this time I'm going to use the more fine tip for this. And that is really a fine tip. I'm going to move back to the brush for a larger area like this. Colors are slightly different. So when you look at these, the color for the brush tip is different than the fine tip. So that's something to keep in mind. And the fine tip is definitely a hard surface. I'm going to cut these out so I'm not, I don't really care how these go. So I'm going to move these and kind of blend these together. 
this is kind of an interesting thing. It's it's definitely different than I would have expected. I'm not sure I would really call these brush tip markers as much as I would call them like watercolor markers. A little bit of a house. Let's see if we can, I don't know what color door, maybe a yellow door. Brighten up the door a little bit. I know I want to do yellow in the inside. Let's check and see what that color is. That's a good one. We'll do yellow in the window. Maybe with a little orange to highlight it. I want to see what colors that is. Yep. Blend that out a little bit. Yeah, so this is an interesting these are interesting markers. I like them, but if you're looking for brush tip markers per se, I'm not sure these are brush tip 100%. I think these are more in the way of markers that are watercolor markers. Let's give her a little blue wings and maybe her dress. A slightly different color and the tips do look like they're slightly different than the brush side so the, the fine tip is a little different than the brush side get into that little wing that's peeking in the back get some of the color off. Let's try a purple. We'll do a little bit of the purple on this one. So I am liking these markers. I do like them and I think I will use them. I feel like for the price point, if you're looking for some watercolor markers to kind of dip your toe in, these are definitely an option and because they're in the tin they're sort of travel friendly I'm gonna just use the excess on this the wing I just want a teeny bit of color on the wing so I'll pull some up from the dress area into the wing I really am liking these I feel like they're I feel like that's an opportunity to use these in the future. I'll do half of these little tulipy flowers. The brush also may, the reason why these may not be a hundred percent brush like at this point is because maybe they have to be broken in a bit. Maybe they need to be softened up. So that's possible as well. But for right now I'm just going to, I like the look of that and I can go back into these a little bit more detail later. I like the way the color moves. I like the way they blend. Not bad. One thing I will notice, I will say, is as you're clicking these back on, it's easy to think that they're on and there's a little bit of a gap. I don't know if you can see this. There's a little bit of a gap in there you want to make sure that they're completely stuck on. So that's something to think about is that, you know, maybe do the 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 tap test to make sure that they're a hundred percent on and that you're not compromising your markers. I think in this case I'm going to use the fine tip to sort of go down this stem. I do like having both the fine and the the larger tip because there are some things there are certainly some images that I have that I use or that I use like this that have a need for that so it's definitely nice to be able to have that fine tip that I can be more exact with but I'm really liking this Let's see if I can use some of the excess to get the stem I like using the watercolors see how the darker looks. Do 
do a little bit of darker accents on this as well. Nice. Blend it out. Yep, I definitely am a fan of these. I I like them for different reasons than I thought that I would. I thought that I was going to like these because I thought that I might like these as a just as a way to use brush markers, but I think I just really like them as watercolor markers. I'm getting it's easy to put the ink down. They're easy to blend. Some of that might be using also the um, hard press watercolor paper. I really like using the hard press watercolor paper because it's very smooth, gives me that opportunity to be able to smooth out and then I'm going to use the pink excess on the wings. But yes, I really am liking this. I think this is really cute. They're easy to use. I think that you need to be careful, like I said, to make sure that the, the tips are on, that they, they're fully on. I like the case that they're in, the fact that it's a tin. And I will say, just as a quick look, I think I will be using these in the future. I think this is something that I will continue to use. I'm curious as to what that color is. Nice bright door. I may make that a little bit more brown. I like the variety of colors that are here. It's got some nice colors. Let's see if I can blend that out. If you get in quickly and there's still some color on there, they blend out very nicely. Very nice. So yes, I am going to say overall, I think that these are a good option to dip your, your sort of toe into the watercolor marker. Again, I wouldn't call necessarily call them a 100% brush tip. The, the brush side is, is a little bit less of a brush than I have seen in others. A lot of the others are like this water pen where it's completely brush whereas these have got kind of a hard tip with a little bit of a brush on them. The fine tip is just a regular watercolor marker. It's not at all a brush. So calling these brush markers is a little bit of a stretch, but all, all in all, I think as watercolor markers, these are great. They come in this great case. There's a nice variety of colors. It's a great starter kit. I could see this be something that um, kids would like, hence the Crayola name. I think that Crayola is is often sometimes directed at, at younger ages, and I think that this is op the, a good option. I also think this is a good option for adults. If you look at the, the color palette that you have here, I, I really feel like this is not a bad opportunity to kind of dip your toe into the watercolor marker. It's uh, 16 markers which is 32 colors that come in. So each tip is slightly different color. And I, I'm really kind of impressed. I'm going to enjoy using these in the future. I want to thank everybody for joining me today and spending time with me. And remember, always be creative.